DeAndre Swift, massive night, 28 carries, 175 yards, and a touchdown. Also caught three passes for six yards. This was the most rushing yards by an Eagle since LaShawn McCoy in 2013. I mean, guys, Swift fills in with Kenneth Gainwell out with the rib injury and Barry. A massive night for him running behind that Eagles. He looked exciting. Line. Look, we, we talked about this yesterday. We just say, hey, if I had to start an Eagles running back with DeAndre Swift, but we just didn't know what kind of usage he would get. This is only the fifth game in his career, literally the fifth game in his career where he got 20 or more touches. What's exciting is, though, um, is so uh, he had a huge game, obviously, 27.1 fantasy points, 26 for 176 caught a couple of balls for six yards. He could have had an even more more uh, massive day, right? Because he gets vultured at the one yard line. Two different times he's down at the one. Jalen Hurts comes in, gets the bush, bush push, if you will. So as you see it there on your screen, that's the one touchdown he did. He could have had a three touchdown game. I have a couple of things that I'm concerned about though. I, I know this seems concerned, but like he had a 9.6% target share. Like the, the, for the for the season, he's got a 9.6% target share as well. Just three receptions for six yards. I if he's not going to get any passing game work, then he needs this kind of volume. And I'm not convinced that when Kenneth Gainwell comes back, he gets this kind of volume. Like the the Vikings defense helped out a lot as well, and Swift ran great. But I'm not ready suddenly to be like, oh, never mind about Kenneth Gainwell, who got so much work in week one and DeAndre Swift got two touches. Obviously this performance gets Swift a lot more touches, but I don't, do you think uh, suddenly he's taking over this backfield? Are you with there? I mean, don't you have to rank Swift above Gainwell next week just because of the upside and what he showed? I just think that just the way that he ran, I mean, he looked like the guy had been taken as a top two first round pick uh, in fantasy for so long in Detroit. And I know that he didn't get the work in the receiving game, but they weren't giving anyone work in the receiving game uh, because they decided that they were just going to take what the defense gave them. Uh, and that was running the ball down the throat yeah. of Minnesota. And I mean, his rushing prop last night was 34 and a half. He went 28 for 175 and a touchdown and could have had three. Yeah, I mean, yeah, easily. I mean, like, you could have you could have bet his rushing prop, like, middle of the game yeah. and still hit it, uh, hit the over. I just, uh, I'm with you there. Like, my, when my rankings come up for week three, if Kenneth Gainwell is like, hey, he's coming back, I will still have Swift ranked ahead of Kenneth Gainwell. But I don't, I, I think there is a chance you've seen DeAndre Swift's best game of the year is my only argument oh, here. Oh, for sure. Is that, and the other, but one thing I think that is exciting here is that, if, uh, once again, even with Kenneth Gainwell out in a game in which they are running at will, Rashad Penny still can't get a sniff, right? I mean, like, he at least was healthy. In the, at least he a little was active. siding in the fourth quarter yeah, was I mean, exciting right, exactly. for the drive. He, he got, he was, at least he was active. <laughs> yeah. But, and Boston Scott isn't going to be really a thing here. So I think what's really interesting here is that um, what we thought was a three- or four-headed committee coming into the season feels like it's now a two-headed committee. Because you don't really feel like Austin Scott's going to get any run unless there's an injury. Same with Rashad Penny. So if you're telling me it's just Kenneth Gainwell and DeAndre Swift and we'll figure out what that split is when Gainwell's back, I can work with that, right? That, those two guys behind that offensive line, those two guys will have value. Like flex, flex upside value. Yep. I think we're now at a point where DeAndre Swift is maybe the highest variance player in fantasy the rest of the season because one, he's really good. He's very talented. He's behind the best offensive line in football, and that team is going to have a lot of leads. And he just got 28 carries. And mm. so there is a chance that Kenneth Gainwell comes back, and Sirianni's like, uh, Swift is a lot better. Swift is getting 70% of the carries. There's also a chance that Swift is the number two running back next week. So right. he, he, could be, he could be the number one running back in fantasy. Like that is in play behind, on that team with that talent. He could also be a guy you don't even feel comfortable starting. I, I will say this. If somebody made me a really nice offer for DeAndre Swift, I would take it. Okay. Again, just because high variance. And by the way, this is somebody that has struggled to stay healthy sure. throughout his career. Again, there's literally he's been in the league for a number of years he's had five games with 20 or more touches this was number five last night i mean he's five nine to 15 he's not you know he, he's not adrian peterson uh, That's right. so that that would be i the way this would work out the deandre swift story is that he gets the lead job has two games and by week five he's the number one running back in fantasy and then he gets injured that's yeah. kind of how it feels like moving over to the vikings side of things obviously justin jefferson is the other player to completely go off in this game the volume in the second half was huge he ends up with 11 total catches for 159 yards in this game uh over almost 25 fantasy points i mean no surprise here especially the script i mean the vikings were playing behind in the second half kirk cousins was dropping back eight million times and justin jefferson is exactly who we thought he would be just no touchdown on the night barry 
Yeah, I mean, it's weird. God, that, that rule is so brutal, the, the fumble it's out the of the It's the worst rule in football. It is, it's the worst rule in sports. It makes no sense. Like, if you fumble, like any, if you fumble anywhere else in the field, you get the ball right, you know, and it goes out of bounds, and you keep possession where it went out of bounds. But here, you, tur- you lose possession, and the other team, I, it makes no sense to me. But I just, I need a, I need a ruling from you, uh, Connor Rogers, if you can. If you can just help me out here as you see the play there on your screen in terms of uh, Jefferson fumbling out of the end zone. So I need a ruling. What do you think was the worst call? Was it, um, was it Jay Croucher <laughs> taking the under on Justin Jefferson receiving yards? Or was it me putting Kirk Cousins on the hate list? Because he had a monster <laughs> night, you know, and I was, he just shut me up too. Well, what you always, what's the worst call? I mean, Jay doubting Justin Jefferson. <laughs> is. Think, right? You and, know. I, and I looked at him and like, eh, it might be onto something. It's a lot of yards. But yeah, it's a it's matchup like he's not slay. good against. And then you sit and you're like, it's Justin Jefferson. Jefferson. What, were, what well, were you thinking? With a minute to go in the second quarter, he had 27 yards and I was sitting pretty. Live yeah. line was like 78 and a half. A lot of value. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. You both of... had track records too. <laughs> Primetime Kirk Cousins, always bet against him. Right. Justin Jefferson against Slay, that's been his toughest matchup. Primetime Kirk Cousins with a banged up offensive line against a team that brought pressure at one of the highest rates in the NFL the week before. Kirk Cousins is traditionally very poor against pressure. One of my bets was Kirk Cousins to throw a pick, and he didn't do that yeah. either. I mean, I like, bet on Jalen Carter to have a sack against right, him. He did, like, right, like a layup. Car, right. Seemed like a layup. Carter and looked great, but you're going to have a sack. Did not have a sack. So just, well, I'm, you know, I, I just want to cop to that and. Well done, Kirk Cousins, because he was on the hate list and he made me look stupid. I just say that, like usually th- I make myself look stupid, but in this particular case, it was Kirk Cousins. I just say that Jefferson is no like he completely dominated that. He went well, well over. Kirk Cousins, I mean, he had a great stat line. He didn't, didn't look amazing to me. He looked right. solid enough, but he really should have had Jefferson on that. T- that should have been a touchdown. Uh, so you know, I guess that's just the Kirk Cousins uh, experience, and the stat line was awesome. To me, I think you know the uh, the bigger concern here is. Uh, just and we need to move on quickly. But great game from Devonte Smith and and Hawkinson as well. They were who we thought yeah. we were. Uh, I agree with you. I also I know this is sacrilegious to say, especially for me, because you know no one loves Jalen Hurts more than me, except maybe Mama Hurts. But I will just say that like I thought you were Mama Hurts. I, I might be. <laughs> DNA <laughs> tests are inconclusive. I'll just say that I he didn't look great to me. Like he got the two gimme. T- he got me. He got the two bunny touchdowns. So it's like okay. Great, but like, you know, and he, he was efficient, 18 of 23, but under 200 yards uh, passing, you know, 12 rushes for 35 yards. Like, like they did a good job of bottling it up. I, I will give Brian Flores credit. Like, I thought they had a nice game plan at least for Jalen Hurts. Like, I mean, they were able to run at will. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just I, I just feel like, you know, he, he, was, he, was, he wasn't great in week one. He obviously had a big fantasy day in week two, but I don't. I don't think we're 100% out of the woods yet with Jalen Hurts. That's all I'm saying. He doesn't look right. There's just something off, and I'm guessing it's the Shane Steichen's no longer there, and it's a new offense, and he's adjusting, so you give him that. And it was a on. short week, right? He's played, he's played, you know, two games in 10 days. And- short week. But I tweeted that last night that someone needs to just kind of turn Jalen Hurts off and try turning him back on again. It's just like right. all the wire. He's just not quite there. And I'd be a little bit concerned. If Tua lights up the Pats, and the Pats' defense isn't as good as we think it is, then it's like, all right, maybe, yeah. maybe sell high on Jalen Hurts. But still. He gets the touchdowns, which is a part of his game that you can count on. If I was drafting again today, he's still one of my top four quarterbacks that's going. But I just, you know, I had him as my number one quarterback, and I might, uh, I don't, you know, if I had the number, yeah. right, I might, Mahomes or even Josh Allen, you know, anyway. So, still a big night for Devontae yeah. Smith. He has over 23 fantasy points. He catches the bomb. He looks amazing. Four catches, 131 yards, and a touchdown. Not a big night for A.J. Brown. Only had no. four catches for 29 yards. But Jalen Hurts didn't seem too concerned about A.J. Brown being a little upset uh, when he spoke after the game. I think um, everybody wants to make plays and everybody wants to contribute. Um, I have no worry about him. You know, and he's, he's, a, he's a great player, great teammate, great friend. And, um, we'll all do any, anything and everything with winning in mind. I mean, guys, we know what this offense is going to be. A.J. Brown is going to have his weeks. Devontae Smith, of course, having his weeks. He had, a, he had a 31% target share. And, like, after that little blow up on the on the sideline where I think he said, like, A.J. Brown needs the ball. A.J. Brown talking about himself in the third person, like by that. the way. That's a, that is a, ter- that's a, a strong move. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a strong Another Barry staple. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, Barry needs uh, his diet soda. <laughs> Barry does need his diet soda. Um, <laughs> I, I'll say that um, – A.J. Brown, like, after that, like, three of the next four pass plays went to A.J. Brown after that. And one of them was the touchdown that got called back. Like, you know, right. or, 
Um, you know, and then there was a pass inter that, you know, looked like it could have been pass interference. Um, that would have been a touchdown if he, so I, I'm not worried about AJ. I'm not worried about AJ Brown. I'm also, by the way, um, as long as we're talking about guys from this game that I'm not worried about, uh, I'm, as you see here, this is the, that's the play looked like it was a touchdown for AJ Brown. Ultimately they ruled him out. Um, but yeah, I think the narrative, oh, it was a, sorry. It was a, um, it was a, it was a penalty. It was a, yeah. Hold on the running back there. Um, so it was a, it was a touchdown. It was just called back due to penalty. Um, great, great catch there. Um, yeah, Boston Scott. Hold on, Boston Scott. Damn it, Boston Scott. Uh, oh, it's Penny. Oh, Sorry, never Penny. mind. Penny. Penny. Oh, whatever. Penny. Neither of them are in. He's never going to be back on the field. Yeah, well, exactly. Good job, Rashad Penny. You did, you didn't contribute to the box score, but you did take fantasy points away Indeed. from Jalen Brown. If Mitchell I can't have Brown. No one can. Yeah, that's exa Rashad exactly. Right it's, now. Right, yeah. Sorry, um, I only saw the I saw the one number. Um, uh, but as long as we're talking about running backs with poor performances, I, I think we got to talk about Alexander Madison here for or real quickly, just the sense that like he's getting a ton of volume, but another poor fantasy day for Alexander Madison. I just I, I have two things to say about Alexander Madison. One is I'm not worried about it. Like he played the Buccaneers and the Eagles, which I think again, we'll see how the season plays out. But if we were talking before the season, we say like name the top five run defenses in the NFL. Like those are two of the teams that are on it. Traditionally, the Bucks and Eagles have both been among the league leaders in terms of toughest teams to run against Tennessee's there as well. So two tough defenses. He's getting volume. We know this guy is talented. We've seen him be uh, productive before. They were able to move the ball. Kirk Cousins had a very good day moving the ball. And so teams are now going to have to respect that as Jordan Addison comes into his own and Hawkinson, obviously, and Jefferson. So I am not worried about Madison. I would be buying low. So I will just say that from a fantasy perspective, from a real life perspective, like check, check out, you know, Madison on Twitter or uh, Instagram. He got these messages, these DMs from I'm, I'm using fans in quotes because they're not fans. They're like awful human beings. And like it's the... I beg fantasy managers to never, ever tag a player unless you're saying something positive. Like, they don't care about our fantasy teams. Like, Alexander Madison's worried that the Vikings weren't able to get a win in their 0-2. He doesn't care about your fantasy team, by the way, nor should he. And his, I don't know. I, I, I'm not worried about Alexander Madison as a fantasy asset, but as a person, as a human being, I am because that's what he went through with some of those messages are awful. Yeah, it's reprehensible. It's, uh, yes. Just last thing on this game, uh, on, from a fantasy perspective, I would be selling high on Jordan Addison if you get a, a knockout deal, just because so far he's been dependent on touchdowns in each of his first two games and these monster long gains of 62 yards and then 39 yards last week. I just don't think there's a ton of targets in there for him. He's had 11 over the past two weeks. I think that's probably about what he's going to be yeah. at because Hawkinson and Jefferson, they just get so much love from Kirk Cousins and rightfully so. I do well, wonder, Jay, though, can this defense be bad enough that this yeah, is who they potentially. are? I, Honestly. I'll, you could have I, three high volume targets. Right? I'll, I'll just say, I think Addison's really talented and yeah. I think, you know, uh, I think he, I want to say uh, he had 64, I, I think he um, he played 56% uh, of the snaps in week one. He played 71% yes. yep. of the snaps yesterday. So his role is increasing. I think it's a matter, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when he becomes the number two and KJ Osborne becomes the number three. I do think there's enough volume. Remember, over 100 targets last year from Adam for yep. Adam Thielen that are now no longer there. Hawkinson's there, which hurts a little bit, but... I don't know. I just I believe in the kids' talent. I do think they're yeah. gonna they're gonna throw. But listen, I have Addison in our show league. So and I know you have Chris Olave, but you love Michael Thomas. <laughs> oh, yes, That's so your Saints. So do you want to do? Uh, I will trade you Addison for Olave just so you can get the you know the second. Saints wide receiver off your team. Yeah, listen, if you can work a side trade to get Michael Thomas onto your team and send him my way, a little three-team action, you probably have to give up Mahomes or wherever your quarterback is. But, uh, yeah, we can if, talk about If you want to – I will I will figure out a way to get Michael Thomas if you'll give me uh, Olave for Michael <laughs> Thomas and Jordan Addison. That's also a deal I will do. Yeah, sounds like a fantastic trade, Matthew. By the way, I have in, in our show league uh, where I'm 1-0, I, uh, I have Jalen Hurts and TJ Hawkinson. So, uh Good stuff. Yesterday was Glad a good day for you. me and a bad day for Penn State. Blake. Uh, so oh, I beat him last week. You, you got to go it. through I'm, I'm on yeah, my way. Mm. We are about to be 0 2. <laughs> Penn State, Blake. Uh. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com. And I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched. Or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully 
to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.